multi-monda support and configuration under Xorg is kind of finicky. Like, you can get it working if you know what you're doing, but it's probably part of the reason why every single Destro environment gives you a graphical tool to manage it. Luckily, over on the Sway side, it's absolutely dead simple. First thing we need to do is work out what display Sway even knows about. And that can be done with one of the Sway built-in commands. That is Sway MSG, so Sway message, dash T, get, underscore, outputs. This is effectively the same as running something like XRander to see what all of your monitors are actually capable of. So in my case, I have three monitors. I have my one plugged into HDMI A1. I have this one up here plugged into DisplayPort 2 and this one up here plugged into DisplayPort 1. This is going to tell you basically everything you care about with your monitors. So what settings they're currently using, like what their current mode is, where they're positioned, if you're using scaling, what modes are currently available, so like what refresh rate and resolution to run at, and most importantly, how to actually access that monitor. So you don't use the actual name of the display. So this one's showing up, the one in front of me, as unknown VG27VQ. I guess ASUS doesn't properly report their like manufacturer name. But anyway, the most important bit is this bit here, DP-1. So this one in front of me, this is DP-1. The one over here, this is DP2, and the one behind me, the one or in front of me, sorry, with my notes on it, that is HDMI-A-1. These are dependent on where the monitors are plugged in, so if you go and rearrange the way the monitors are plugged in, you will need to modify how your settings are being set. Now, as for actually modifying the settings, there are third-party tools that exist like WLR Render, which operate in a fairly similar way to something like XRender. But Sway also has a built-in solution, the output command. Now, you've probably seen the output command before if you've ever gone and set anything inside of the Sway config. So, what I mean by this is the way the wallpaper is being set, that right there is using the output command. So this is used not just for setting your wallpaper, but also modifying the way your monitors are configured as well. So this can either be set inside of your Sway config, and this will make it permanent. Every time you open up Sway, these settings are going to be run, or you can run it from your terminal. So if we go and run Sway MSG, and then output, after that output command, all of the regular stuff you can do in your Sway config can be run here as well. So in the case of this wallpaper command, the asterisk means run this on every single display. If I instead had something like, say, DP-1, it would only set that wallpaper on that monitor. So the first thing you might want to do if you have a high refresh rate or high resolution monitor is set those values. This is going to be done with the same subcommand, the mode subcommand. Now for the rest of this video, I am going to be operating on DP-1, DisplayPort 1, my main monitor. Now if you get this ID wrong, then the command just will not run. Now as I said, we're going to use the mode subcommand, and then the modes that you can set it to are any of the modes available in this list. Now obviously your list is going to be a bit different depending on what display you're currently using, but this does also include the weird ones like 119.982 and 59.940. But when it's something that is a whole number, like say 50, 60, 120, things like that, you don't have to include the zeros. So the way this works is very simple then. I'm going to set it to something like 1920 at 60 hertz. So 1920, make sure you spell it correctly, 1920 by 1080 at, and then 60 hertz hertz. You do need to include the HZ. If you don't, it's going to say, I don't know what that refresh rate is. It's dumb. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. So 60 hertz, and then it should go and set it. Now, the refresh rate part is entirely optional. So if you just want to set it to 1920 by 1080, and then whatever refresh rate it lands at is perfectly fine, that is doable as well. Something else very important to consider is the placement of your monitors. Not the physical placement, I mean the placement in the virtual space. So right now, let's just assume these are my two monitors. So we have DisplayPort 1 on the left-hand side, and then we have DisplayPort 1 on the right-hand side. This one, as I said before, this is my main monitor. So physically, they're placed somewhat like this. 
but you generally don't want to have a gap between the monitors. That wouldn't be a good way to use it. And you also don't want to have them be overlapping like this because then you're going to have windows that like get duplicated between both monitors and sometimes things just don't work correctly. So generally what you want to have is monitors that are basically like lined up as close as possible without overlapping. This is what we're setting here. And Sway effectively creates a big virtual display to allow you to do this. So according to my settings, this monitor here is placed at 0, 0. And then this monitor here is placed at 1920 by 0. So it's shifted over horizontally by 1920 pixels to make sure they're touching as close as possible without overlapping. The way this is done is very simple. So if we go and run the pause or the position command, then we go and pass in the X position. I'm going to say add a thousand, comma, not X like we did with the resolution, comma, the Y position. And try to run this. It's not going to work because this doesn't work inside a Sway message. So what we can do instead is do it inside of my config file. And as you can see, I'm setting position here. And as you can see, I'm setting position here at 1920, comma, zero. I'm going to go and set this to be a thousand instead. I will then save it and reload my config, and that's going to work. I don't know why it wasn't working in the weird way before. Now, if I have my cursor on the other screen, it's still on this screen, so things aren't acting the way they should. I don't recommend doing this. I recommend just making them touch as closely as possible without overlapping. I was going to say, skipping over the bug and back to things just working, but the next command stopped working as well, so we're going to do it in the config, because I know the config actually functions. The next command is the scale command. So if you have a 4K display, things are going to look fairly small. So scale is going to allow you to go and increase the size of everything without dropping your resolution. If we go and pass in scale, and then the amount we want to scale by. So if I go and pass in two, that is going to be a double scale. If we go and run this and then reload the config, because I'm on 1080p, everything is going to look a little bit um, a little bit big, and I can't actually move my mouse over to this display now because things are kind of broken. This next one, not everyone is going to need, but when you do need it, it's incredibly useful. The transform option, which lets you rotate your displays. So right now I have a vertical monitor and that is being used to have my script on it. But maybe you want to have something like a dedicated social media monitor, or you want to have like a dedicated Twitch chat monitor and things like that. There's plenty of reasons why you might want to have a vertical display. So transform accepts a couple of different options. 90, 180, 270, those are all degrees to rotate it by, flipped, so basically flip it from being a regular horizontal display to a, I guess, flipped horizontal display, flipped 90, flipped 180, flipped clockwise, or flipped anti-clockwise. Now, most of those aren't really that useful. For the most part, all you're going to use is 90, maybe 270, depending on how you have your monitor rotated. And if you have your monitor upside down for some reason, you'll use 180. The other ones are nice to have there, but aren't really that useful for most people. And if you have a display that is FreeSync or G-Sync compatible, this can be controlled with the adaptive underscore sync option. To enable it, you do on. To disable it, you turn it off. Now, do keep in mind that some monitors will have ways to turn it off on the monitor itself. That is going to be a separate option from modifying it inside of Sway. So if you find that it isn't working, it's very possible that you have it disabled somewhere in your regular monitor settings. And speaking of your monitor settings, if you do want to go and disable your monitor, but you don't want to have to go and physically turn it off for whatever reason, maybe you want to go and hide something on your screen, for example, that can be done with one of, I guess, three separate options. They're kind of all linked together. So if we go and pass in disable here, this is going to disable the monitor. If we then go and pass in enable, that is then going to go and re-enable the monitor. I have no idea what just happened to my camera. I'll fix that. Note to self and other creators, do not disable monitors when you're recording, because apparently Pipewire is not a fan. Now the other thing you can do is go and pass in the toggle option, and then rather than going and disabling or enabling it, it is going to go and, well, toggle it. And it seems like it broke OBS, but it did come back. 
Now, that was by no means every single option available. I didn't go into things like mode line settings and sub-pixel settings and things like that, but 99% of the time, you will not need to touch those. If you do, though, I would recommend going into the man page for sway-output, and this is going to tell you how every single one of the commands works and all the options and things like that, and if for whatever reason the thing you need to do wasn't covered by the basic stuff, it's going to be here. Now, while I personally prefer using the output command, if you want to have a GUI solution, one does exist. That is a program called wdisplays, and this is going to work on other WR roots based compositors as well. When you open it up, it's going to give you this logo on all your displays, telling you what display it currently is. So DP1, DP2, and then HDMI A1 behind my other screen. So this gives you a much better indication of how things are actually positioned. It can be kind of hard to imagine where they are placed in virtual space. So even just moving stuff around in here and then sort of like converting that into a command can certainly be useful. Now, this doesn't have every single one of the settings available in the output command. But as I said before, most of those you're probably not going to use. The main ones you want, like the position, the resolution, the refresh rate, all of that stuff, is going to be here just fine. The only problem this has is it doesn't seem to have any discernible way to actually save the state of your monitors. So every time you reopen Sway, you would have to reopen this application and then reset everything again. This is why I generally prefer just doing it in my config. But if you just want to test out some basic settings without worrying about all of those subcommands, this is a pretty easy way to do so. So let me know, are you using Sway, do you use multiple monitors, or are you one of those people still just living in the past, one monitor is all you need, why would you ever need more than one? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and verify linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.